Welcome to my new video. After all the positive feedback to the last one, I will hurt you for this. A day will come when you think you're safe and happy and your joy will turn to ashes in your mouth. I decided to go for another round. Now, machine learning and in particular deep learning revolutionized the world as we know it today. We have seen tremendous advances in speech and image recognition, followed by the application of deep learning to many other domains. Such that it can solve some interesting problems, such, such as speech recognition or machine translation and something like that. In many of those domains, deep learning is now the state of the art or is even going beyond it. A clear trend is that networks are growing more and more complex and more and more computationally demanding. I'm, I'm optimistic about what can happen just with more computation and more data. Today, we are building ever-increasing networks that are built on top of previous generations of network topologies. As neural networks are inherently compatible with each other, we are able to combine them and adapt them to new purposes. So that is transfer learning, and it has been done in principle for many decades. If you aim to tackle a new problem, there are no clear guidelines that define an appropriate network topology. The most common approaches are to have a look at the work of others that attempted to solve, solve similar problems, or to design an entirely new topology on your own. This design is often inspired by classical methods, but it is up to the network and the training data to learn the correct weights such that they converge to a plausible solution. As such, there are even networks that learn well-known functions such as the Fourier transform from scratch, as in AutoMap, that you can find in the description, and with the discrete Fourier transform being a matrix multiplication. Of course, we are building on all these um great abstractions that people have invented over the millennia, such as matrix multiplications. It is often modeled as a fully connected layer. With this approach, it is immediately clear that two disadvantages cannot be avoided. First, the fully connected layer introduces a lot of free parameters that may model entirely different functions. Second, the computational efficiency of a fast Fourier transform can never be reached with this approach. If we already know that a specific function is required to solve a particular problem, it comes to our mind to ask the question of whether it would not be of advantage to incl include it into the structure of our network as a kind of prior knowledge. The method of known operator learning investigates exactly this procedure in a new theoretical framework. While this idea seems simple and intuitive... Today I hear a lot of people define deep learning as gradient descent uh, applied to these differentiable functions. The theoretical analysis identifies also clear advantages. First, the introduction of a known operation into a neural network always results in a lower or equal maximum error bound. Second, the number of free parameters in the model is reduced and therewith also the size of the required training data is reduced. Another interesting observation is that any operation that allows the computation of a gradient with respect to the inputs may be embedded into a neural network. In fact, even a subgradient is already sufficient. As we know, for example, from max pooling operations, you can even include operations like the median filter which involves sorting. Interestingly, <clears throat> this piece of theory was only published in 2019. And they had to publish it because I was right. It was developed for the theoretical analysis of embedding of physical prior knowledge into neural networks. Yet the observations also very nicely explain why we see the tremendous success of convolutional neural networks and pooling layers. In analogy to biology, we could argue that convolution and pooling operations are prior knowledge on perception. And that was my 1987 diploma thesis, which was all about that. Recent work goes even further. There exist approaches that even include complicated filter functions, such as the Wesselness filter or the guided filter into a neural network. 
Here we see the example of the FrangiNet that maps the computations of the Frangi filter into a neural network. In contrast to other filters, Frangi's method requires the computation of eigenvalues and exponential functions that can also be mapped into neural networks, as we can see in step 2 and step 3 of this figure. You will also find a link to the paper and code examples in the description of this video. The stuff that works best is really simple. As known operator learning allows the computation of classical theoretical approaches and deep learning, we are now able to drive these ideas even one step further. A recent publication that you will find linked in the description proposes to derive an entire neural network topology for a specific problem from the underlying physical equations. The beauty of this approach is that many of the operators and building blocks in the topology are well known and can be implemented efficiently. Yet, there were still operations that are computationally very inefficient. However, we know from other solutions to similar problems that particular matrix inverses or other less tractable operations can be represented by other functions. Such as matrix multiplications. In this example, an expansive matrix inverse is replaced with a circular matrix. It is a convolutional layer, which is the only learnable part of the proposed network. In the experiments, they demonstrate that the proposed architecture indeed tackles a problem that could previously only be approximately solved. Although they only trained on simulated data, the application on real data is also successful. If you look at the figure on the left, you see the training of a filter on the left using only artificial data, as shown in the center, applied directly on an anthropomorphic phantom on the right. Hence, the inclusion of prior knowledge also supports building network architectures that generalize well towards specific problems. We think that these new approaches are interesting towards the community of deep learning that is going well beyond only modeling perceptual tasks today. In particular, I believe that these methods may be highly relevant for safety critical applications. Uh, regulators pay dis disproportionate amount of, to, of attention to that which generates press. This is just an objective fact. To me, it is exciting to see that traditional approaches are inherently compatible with everything that is done today in deep learning. Hence, we believe that there are many more new developments to come in the field of machine learning and deep learning in the near future, and it will be exciting to follow up on them. So I hope you liked this video. And the best thing about this channel is that I don't give a fuck. And if you liked it, please leave some comments, click like or subscribe. So see you in the next video.